What's up, everybody? We've got Caleb Christopher here, a man, a myth, a legend in the transaction coordinating uh, space. I really like him. I don't know him that well, but I've heard so much about him and I'm excited to interview him. Caleb, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you for being here and I can't wait to get into it and learn what am I missing from creative uh, transaction coordinating. So real quick, just tell people a little bit about yourself. What's your business? Um, stuff like that. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Uh, so I, I run Creative TC. That's creativetc.io. It's literally that. And um, <clears throat> the Sub2 community with Pace Morby, born and raised there, basically. That was the first mentorship I joined. It's the only mentorship I've been in. And while I was there, I did my own Sub2 deal. And it was a nightmare because the resources that we had were minimal. The people we were supposed to turn to were busy. And I'm like, this is a nightmare. Somebody's got to solve this problem because there was not enough guidance. And I said, and it was October 2021, I committed publicly to the group. I'm going to solve this problem. Everything I learned, I'm going to share with the group. And since then, I've been on that mission. And transaction coordination, it's, it's like project management for a transaction on creative deals. It's not the same as your paper pusher transaction coordinator on an on-market deal that has the same template. They work in the same geographic zone and have the same templates all day, every day. Each one is a custom project and it's been an adventure and a ride and a blast. And I was blessed to be able to uh, fill a gap that I saw in the sub two community and Pace uh, blessed me in return for doing that. Cause I know he wanted to have that gap filled. And I'm like, I told him, I said, I'm your man. I'll figure this out. I'll do it. I'm committed to it. And so, He's been promoting me and helping me, um, uh, pushing me along a little bit, right? Just plugging me in. But otherwise, it's been the hard work of creating contracts and documents and diagrams and all the parts and pieces to manage these creative deals because some of them get incredibly complex. It's a roller coaster. Right. Right. 100%. Yeah. I mean, like, I think that stuff gets super crazy with like the creative transaction. Like, I. We've got a deal I, right now. Somebody's behind in payments the buyer is going to catch up payments and then sell the house back to the seller on wraparound financing with a first right of refusal in case he ever decides to sell or defaults with a, a deed in lieu of foreclosure if he defaults and it's like tracking the moving pieces and writing custom paperwork <laughs> it's a i love it i think like no whoever was on that did not like the people who were listening had no idea what you just said so yeah. I don't know if we're going to get that complicated today. I think I'm going to just stick to your story and then we're going to like, we're going to go from there, like just sticking to your story and figuring out from there. So this is, this is what I want to say, because I think this is super interesting in the sense that I get the sense in real estate in general, everyone is kind of pushed to do like cold calling and to be like the acquisitions guy, the closer, right? Like that is like what we're pushed to. And it's like, man, like this is what you're supposed to do. Like you like that. You just got to keep pushing in order to make it happen. Right. Um, but I like your, I like the fact that you're TC because I don't think that's meant for everybody. Right. That's meant for some people who have a certain type of personality, but for you, like what, um, how did you realize that transaction coordinating was where you should be and that not, <laughs> not be, not be the cold calling guy or the closer? Cause there's nothing wrong with that. I know we like, no, yeah. Put it up there in the pedestal, but I think, I think it's awesome. So tell me a little bit about how you decided to become a transaction coordinator. I'll have to start with this. Somebody asked me when I said I was starting creative TC, somebody said, Oh, so you want to be a transaction coordinator? And immediately my answer was no. I don't want to be a transaction coordinator. I'm starting a transaction co coordination business because mm -hmm. transaction coordinating my own deal was a nightmare and I'm committed to solving the problem for the community. So <clears throat> I, I'm especially qualified because I've done cold calling a little bit. I've done lead management on, an, on a wholesale team. I've done creative closing. I hate cash closing. That's not for me. And, and it's right. You're right. Not everything's for everybody. And then I've done my own transaction coordination. I've done it for a couple other people's deals before that. Um, I've done a lot of like underwriting and, and helpful consulting. And I wrote a spreadsheet for the sub two community that hundreds of people use every single day. So I, I, I soak up knowledge like a sponge. I drink from a fire hose. I watched 
hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of content. So I have a really broad knowledge really fast. And I've always had this ability to take distant parts and pieces and put them together into a big picture. And so I love just getting involved in creative deals. So from that aspect, I love being a transaction coordinator. But when it comes down to getting the nitty gritty done, I'm actually not that great personally. I have to admit that. I lack follow through that's necessary to be the best transaction coordinator. And I've I've got people on my hmm. team who are far better at that follow up and I appreciate and I tell them I appreciate them every single day. I just plug into the most complex problems and bring a solution and I'm really good at outlining and designing a solution and then coaching them through it while they go do the action and then if it's enough of something that's going to be repeatable, I'll make a process or a diagram out of it. That's it. That's me in a nutshell as far as transaction coordination goes. So what was what was the story though? So like how did you like you did all of those different things and then what made you be like no this is this is the right thing? Was it like was it when you saw the that there weren't the resources in sub 2 or like was it like a That's personal it. thing? So okay. there's a couple there's a couple of things at play. Like uh I appreciate the sub 2 community. Uh love pace, love the community. I love serving and giving. But that's just naturally what I do. And I find a lot of, I guess, emotional income by doing that and, and helping other people and, and getting feedback. Um, and I saw that this was a gap in the community. And it was, honestly, it's kind of a shame that it wasn't filled at the age that the community was at the time. And I'm like, this is a problem that needs solved. And I, I also was working a full-time job before, so I didn't have time to go full-time as a, nor the courage, to go full-time as a wholesaler because I knew I didn't like cold calling. I knew I didn't want to build a business around wholesaling personally because I've watched the videos. I've seen the struggles. I've worked on the teams before. The you got the VAs and the systems and all the parts and pieces. That's all scary. There's a lot to it. I'm not saying I couldn't do it. That was just not where I wanted to spend my time. So I was waiting for a good opportunity. Uh, I thought I just wanted to be a creative closer. I do want to get back to that. Uh, but I also wanted to see more, see and touch more deals. And so the self-serving part for me is that I get to see and touch deals I would never have access to if I started my own wholesaling operation. Mm -hmm. so I got you. I get to see the latest and greatest, the, the first and the worst, whatever you want to insert another rhyme here. I get to see it all and I love it. Right. How does one know, like what type of personality is good for transaction coordinating? Like, what type of person if like should consider doing transaction coordinating instead of going down like what everyone does like wholesaling companies and all that that's a really good question the the best people on my team which i've been building up and paring down appropriately uh, according to traction gino wickman eos they're the ones that have a natural tendency, they, they care, number one. If you want to put it simple, they care a lot, and they've got the ability to follow through and be, be consistent. Caring alone is not enough, but it's, it's the start. Uh, a strong sense of customer advocacy and a sense of urgency are right at the top of our list of values. A tendency toward action is on the top of our values as well. So like, that's like my top three. I think I've got six. I'm working on trying to get it down to five, but it's, it's hard to knock out core values and just get a few. But it's those people, number one, that they care. One of the big things to realize as a transaction coordinator is you're in the, you're engaged in a deal for hundreds or a couple of thousand dollars maybe. Yeah. After a wholesaler has actually spent a thousand to six thousand dollars. Right. So there's this precious cargo that they're handing to you and you better treat it right. Right, that perspective is a huge component of being a transaction coordinator. Understanding the severity of success and failure to, especially to newer wholesalers who are the ones who tend to need transaction coordination because they don't know what they're up against when it comes to dealing with title companies who either don't know what they're doing or refuse to do things the way that we need them done or according to the contract. So somebody who has attention to detail, somebody who, who just freaking cares and is dedicated to success, customer success. Love it, okay. I gotcha. Um, I like that. So tell me a little bit about your story. So like when you were just starting, right, like a lot of us deal with fears and mindset barriers, right? And I think the most important ones are get over right when you're starting. Um, what, when you were starting, what do you feel like 
was keeping you back at the beginning and maybe even not at the beginning, just like what's like, what were some mindset barriers on your journey? I was, let's just do it on the journey. Like what mindset barriers do you feel like you went, you had to overcome and how did you overcome them during your real estate journey? Yeah, dude. So I've, I've never not had a side gig. So for those of you out there who are like the hard workers, you got your full-time or multiple part-times or a full-time plus part-time. I've never not had at least two things going, right? I started InfoSec Consulting. I had a passion for cybersecurity and risk management. It, I'm a very consultative personality anyway. So in cybersecurity, I get to skip through all the, the barriers and the red tape. And I say, I get to ask a business owner, what is this going on? Again, you know, like I just said, I like seeing the insides of other businesses. Who's going to let me walk into mm -hmm. their business, point at the accounting department and say, tell me how you're doing, how you're working. Tell me what right. you're doing. What is this? Right. So being a consultant, you just bust right through the doors, right? They pay you to walk in and, and <laughs> quiz them about what they're doing. Just grill them. It's, it's incredible. It's fun. And so, uh, I had that going. I really enjoyed it. That fit my personality, but it, I'm not that great of a salesman on that side of things personally. Right. Uh, I can only sell what I really believe in. And if I don't honestly believe it's in the best interest of a small business owner to come off of $5,000 right now for a penetration test or another cybersecurity assessment, I'm not going to be a good salesman for that. I believe right. in transaction coordination because I've seen the team rescue deals from, from all sorts of problems. And I know that having a transaction coordinator attached to a deal is more often going to do a lot more good than you can figure ahead of time. So I got no problem selling that. And so anyway, I've always had multiple gigs going and I was afraid to let go or cut things. And Do you have something else other than transaction coordinating going on right now? No, I'm actually on my last cybersecurity assessment. I had a long-term nice. multi-year contract and I said, I'm going to honor the end of this contract because I made a commitment. And, but I cut, I stopped taking new clients. I announced to everybody, no more assessments. And next week should be the wrap up of my last assessment. And then I've got ongoing reports and weekly meetings with one more client until the last Love week it. of December. But yeah, cutting that cord was tough. And I quit my W I had a W two and I cut that and I, I proposed, I, I declared on a live zoom that, you know what, it's time to take this full time. I'm either going to soar or crash and burn. And okay. Let's talk about that for okay. a second. Let's talk about that for a second. Cause I think that's something that people deal with a lot is like, when do I, uh, when do I quit my W2 and when should somebody quit their W2 and also why did you announce it to the world? What was the reasoning behind that? Burn bridges, baby, burn bridges. There was a lot of Zoom <laughs> with 350 plus people with pace. Layla Hormozy had just gotten off of this whole thing and she, she had said something about, uh, I don't want to be 80 years old and realize how much potential I didn't use. Wonder right. how much potential I wasted. I, I'm okay with fail. She was like, I'm okay with failing because I want to discover my potential. And I'm like, dang it. I don't want to be so safe that by the time I'm 80, I wonder how much potential I really had when it's too late. And I'm like, that's a hundred percent where I need to be. And so I already was headed this direction, but that was the, the push that I needed. It was going to be within the next month or two that I made this commitment anyway. But like, I know you need to strike while the iron's hot. Emotions are high. Close the deal, baby. So I raised my hand on that Zoom early on. And as soon as she got done and left the Zoom with Pace Morby, he calls on me and the camera turns on. And I'm like, I'm quitting my job in less than 60 days. And Ooh I want to say it right here in front of everybody because I don't want to turn back. I want to commit to this. I know there's a future in it. I know it's going to be hard. Uh, I'm either going to soar or crash and burn. He's like, slow down. I need to let everybody else know. Cause you and I have already had a discussion and I know where you're at, but I need to tell everybody else. <laughs> I love it. it. It's burning bridges so that there's no turning back. Right. I, I am, I'm either going to crash and burn and I'm, I'm like growing a business is scary and tough. It's hard hiring employees. Right. I've already fired a couple of employees. That's not fun. Right. No, I totally get it. It isn't fun at all. And yeah, man, like I love, I love the fact that you like 
did that, like you burned the bridge. I, what I love though about business or at least real estate investing that I've been seeing that's so funny. I think this might be the only place where we celebrate someone quitting their job. I feel like everywhere else, like people like quitting their job, they're like, oh my God, like, are you okay? Like, why are you doing that? Well, I've, I've like, I, we applaud it because it means like you're chasing your dreams. And I, I think that is 100% the best way to get somebody to um, really commit is burning is even more than just burning the bridges, also announcing it to the world. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what oh, yeah. you think of this, but like, I think there's some like power to um, having a spoken word. I like, I don't know how to explain this, like making a statement and having it like everybody sees it on because then there's like the social proof, right? Like of yeah. like, oh no, we really, now we really got to do it because everyone else, because if I went back, then I look like a goddamn jack well, a hole. <laughs> it, there's, there's multiple things in, in play, right? You're burning a bridge for yourself emotionally and psychologically. You're also doing it in front of a community who's going to be like, right? They're going to cheer you on right there. Like if you want applause, do it in front of people. They'll cheer you on. You'll get your emotional high that you need, and you need to. That needs to be a pretty big kite and hold a lot of wind to carry you forward very far. Right. <laughs> right. It's. I love it. I, I, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I've been in, I'm not a credit card debt person. I've, I'm carrying balances now. I've never carried balances. Mm -hmm. I have more money in my business account, honestly, than I have in credit card balance. But gotcha. I've also got employees to pay. And I, I will be last to eat for all my life. Right. First right. Up, last to eat. Now, I mean, I wake up late because I stay up late. But like. When it comes to being a man uh, and a, a father and a, and a provider, absolutely. No, I got you. I mean, like, I feel like that's literally what it means to be a leader, right? Like, to be a leader, what it what it really means is to um, is to be last to eat. Like that reminds me. Do you know Simon Sinek? You ever heard of Simon Sinek? Like Simon Sinek is like. He has like a book called uh, like I'm, it might be me breaking up. I missed it. Let's see. You hear me now? I think you're there. You hear me? I see you. <laughs> Is it me breaking up? You can't hear me, but I can hear you. I'll send a private chat. I hear you. Cutting out pretty hard. I can't hear you. Uh, uh, maybe. Okay. Here, well, let me slow down. If it's down not on my the... end, it's, it's, it is. It's that commitment to being a father, husband, and provider. And man, it was six plus months that I was working 18 hour days, anywhere from 16 to 18 hours per day. Right. And I'm still burning a lot of hours to do this. So if and when this company becomes reasonably profitable, then I'm not going to be abashed or ashamed of making a profit at all. Right. 100%. You, know, like, you have to give yourself permission to succeed too. And yeah. One of those, those limiting mindsets is I think that a family really only needs 150 to $200,000 a year at the top end to really be, income wise. And so that's a limiting factor for me too. Like it, it affects how I set prices and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent get it. Like so I, was the... yeah, I like, uh, I feel that like 100% what you were saying, right? Like needing to, I think that's also going to push you, right? Like I think like to make a business successful, like the most, th the best thing you can do to make a business successful is having, I keep saying this on every podcast, but I really like stressing it is like to be successful. I think you need two things. I think it's desperation and inspiration, right? I think the inspiration, inspiration is things like Pace and Jamil and things like that, right? Um, and they like lead us forward. They show a path of like, damn, this is inspiring. You're helping so many different people. 
right? And yeah, that's amazing. And then desperation is what's behind you. And like, that's what you're going through right now with like pushing your business forward, making sure that people have employees. When did you, when did you make that statement? Like how long ago was that? My commitment was April. April. That's not that long ago. That was like, I made, I, yeah, I made that statement in, in April. And so it's been seven or eight months. I love it. Awesome. So how, how did you get the courage for that? That's like a very courageous act, right? Like what, what, tell us how like that led up to take that like step to be able to say, Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave my job. breaking up real bad over here like did uh, like how did you get the courage Can I reconnect yeah go for it i'll also reduce the quality okay I'll... let me try that again hold on guys i'm getting a new computer very soon so that it's so that we don't deal with these technical issues that's what's going to happen and then we're going to, uh, and then we're going to be able to, I'm going to get a dope computer in a week. So I'm going to have one more podcast with this laptop, and then I'm going to be able to get a dope freaking computer that is able to handle all sorts of stuff. So while we're, while we're waiting for Caleb to come back in, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go over like a, some cool things about just like, why do you even want a transaction coordinator? So guys, I don't know why, like people need to get a transaction coordinator immediately, in my opinion, right? Like it's, um, I think it's like one of the most important things you can get. And it's not crazy expensive, right? Caleb is amazing for the creative stuff. And he can also do the cash stuff. But the cash stuff you can get from a lot of people, like basic just purchase and sale agreements for like $300 or something like that, right? Um, and I think it's literally life-changing to me. When you try to do your own transaction coordinating while, while also going through, um, while also still needing to get the deals and still needing to do all of that, like that's that's super unnecessary. And for the regular ones, like a lot of times they'll get, um, they'll take payment at closing. I, I doubt Caleb does. We'll talk about that later because he's doing creative financing transaction coordinating and that can get freaking crazy guys. Like creative financing transaction coordinating is insane. And like, it, it just turns so wild. Like I've had creative, I can't even do it. Like I literally cannot do it. And I've been doing this and I've been doing creative deals for quite a while now. Um, like I, I just say like you go hundred percent, you need someone like Caleb when you're doing those ones because it gets so wild. Like, I don't know, like Caleb was talking about at the beginning, something like I wasn't even hundred percent listening, but it can, it's so gnarly. I've got a deal right now, guys where I'm, uh, I just bought it on a hard money loan and then I'm wrapping it to a, uh, a fix and flipper and giving him like hard money, hard money loan terms. So it's kind of cool. It's, but like, it, but like I, I needed to get a TC, otherwise it wouldn't, um, have worked out whatsoever. Right. So again, like a hundred percent, like creative, TC is like the place to go. I'm going to put it up here again, like creative tc.io hundred percent, like check them out whenever you have a creative deal. And if you want like professional work, even with like normal deals as well, um, it gets amazing. So I'll answer questions. So it comes back. Can you tell us a little bit of the process of working with a TC? So working with a TC is really simple. What a TC does is they push the um, file forward. They're the ones being like, Hey, escrow did the, did the, is EMD in from the buyer? Hey, escrow is, uh, it, like what's happening with the sellers? Like, did they sign the agreement? Did they sign closing docs? 
they're making sure this thing closes as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, like honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, like how it works or it's so useful. Um, like how it works in general of like where if you're doing it, it's so stressful. If you have someone else dealing with it, it just makes your life so much easier. And it's also, they're just like not expensive at all. They're so worth it. Um, I'm going to text him real quick. Um, but yeah, like it's amazing if you get the right TC, like I'll drop some gems right now while I'm waiting for him. I'm going to teach you guys how to get, I'll just teach you guys how to get a TC right now. You guys ready? Who wants, who wants to see that? I'm just going to do that until Caleb comes back. Um, let's do this. Just real quick. So let's do this. I'm going to, oh, we got him back. Working on it. All right. All right. We got we him got back. Him back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little There's a bit little of an echo. I'm going to give him a second to like figure it, to figure out his echo. And then, how about now? Perfect. God, you sound perfect, hey, dude. <laughs> it happens. You know, man. Sometimes. Yeah. No. No worries. Um, yeah. All good. So I forgot exactly where we were at. I think we were talking about. Um, Last time I remember, we were... I made my commitment in April, and it's been like eight months since I started. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Well, how long have you been doing real estate in general? Uh, I became an accidental landlord in 2019. And for those of you who don't know, an accidental landlord is when you can't sell your house and you have to rent it out in order to make the payments. Um, so we wanted to move. The house next door to my in-laws came for sale, and it's like four How long ago was this? October 2019. Gotcha. And um, we couldn't sell the house that we were in for enough. We rehabbed it and stuff. But, um, you know, I would just had my number. I'm not going to go below this number. Now, if somebody made me a creative finance offer for my number, I would have moved on it. But we had to refi, and the money that came out of that was barely enough to get us a 5% down um, conventional on the new house next door to in-laws, a little outside city limits. It was wonderful. Now I have a renter. Then COVID hits, and I had five months of zero payments, maybe seven. I can't remember the mm. count anymore. But, you know, they want six months of reserves. Guess why? If you don't know about investment loans, when you want to buy an investment property, they want to see six months of PITI in the bank mm. or in retirement accounts that you can pull from as an emergency fund. Right. And that's why. And it's prudent of them to, to require that. No, and so makes sense. It wasn't long after I did that that I ended up reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad for the first time. Uh, wow. Audiobook, actually. And I listened to books at 3x speed because... Can you're a genius? I put, no, because I put earbuds in and, and there's no other sound, so I can focus on that and I'll just sit there and, and listen to it. I'll do it while I mow the yard or something. And I wanted to put my head through the wall when I realized how much of my life I had wasted not building up wealth by buying assets. Mm -hmm. I was glad I hadn't sold that house, and I'm like, not selling it now. I'm glad I got a house that's a rental. Um, and then I found bigger pockets. And I listened to the entire Bigger Pockets series. So like, it was 360 episodes at the time, I think. The entire thing? You listened, you listened to the entire Bigger Pockets podcast? Yeah, almost 400 episodes That's at the time. That's wild, bro. At, how, at I three, mean, like, for people who don't know, how, much, how many hours of listening is that? I mean, I guess you 3 x it. Yeah, but isn't each one like 60 to 90 minutes? Yeah, so for would you say three hundred sixty? So that's three hundred sixty hours, at least. Oh, yeah, at least. I so, love how you're not surprised about how crazy that is. No, that's so much listening. Every yeah, well, I mean, so my family goes to bed, and I <laughs> I either play video games or learn, and I rather <laughs> learn something useful and like because I'm I got the I I'm one of those who like cons absolutely consumes a topic and then moves on. 
So I'm excited for real estate. I'm excited for transaction coordination. But I also know myself that if I get done learning, like once I feel like I know everything, I'm going to get real bored, real bored. And it's going to be real hard to keep me in, in real estate. And so I told Pace when I started Creative TC, I said, hey, listen, your boy needs to hire a new CEO within the first year or he's most likely going to get sick and tired of that job. Hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to stick. I already know myself. I'll build something 80 percent and then I, something's broken inside me to take it the next 20. So I need to hire a good integrator. I need to have a good system that's set up. I've got a lot of integrator capabilities from rocket fuel integrator and, and visionary. I've got a lot of visionary capabilities and I've got enough integrator in me. Plus I used to be tech support, uh, IT guy, cybersecurity consultant, all that stuff. I can get myself most of the way. If there were two or three of me, I'd conquer the world, but there's not. And so I run myself ragged getting to 80%. And then I'm like, I figured everything out. I've done all the parts I can do. I'd have to hire all the rest out. I'm bored. And I already know that I'm I'm broken that way. So I have to hire somebody who's going to care and take that to the next level. And so I'm, wait, I'm why? I'm people for that. I, I'm kind of curious, like what, what gets bored? Is it the fact that you have nothing to figure out? Like what is, yep. what is making you bored is like you need new challenges more yep. or less. Yep. Gotcha. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like we could, I feel like I could give you more challenges for TC stuff. Like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it could never, I mean, like, I feel like it would never end. Right. Like, I mean, it's, you it's were just talking possible. about it at the it's, beginning. it's deep. It's real right. deep. So I'm, I'm discovering, well, then there's also like certain things are edgy and potentially not legal. And I'm like figuring out, I've got a pretty good inclination about what things are legal and what things are not pretty good already off the top of my head. Right. And every once in a while, a story comes along and I'm like, listen, I'm pretty sure this is the case. You're going to have to prove to me otherwise, or I'm not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, 100%. I want to like do this because <laughs> people don't understand TCs. Like TCs are not lawyers, guys. Like that's not no. their, their job is not, their job is to do your paperwork. Their job is not to understand whether what you're doing is legal or not. So guys always get, always get, uh, you know, always talk about what you're doing with a lawyer before you do it. Mm -hmm. um the tc is just like um they're like a contractor you hired in order to help you like get whatever you're trying to get done but that doesn't know mean what, what paperwork like. goes into a deal they're supposed to be able to proof i'd say a good tc is able to proof your underwriting right when we onboard a deal somebody sends us a deal via email meaning a signed contract then we look at it one of my my uh onboarding specialists tears it apart right uh, you missed initials here I mean, they don't say this right back to the person's face, but they're like, uh, these initials aren't consistent. This signature doesn't match. They signed as a company and not as a person, like just tearing it technically apart. Also looking at the quality and content of the, the contract. Oh, you don't have a memorandum uh, clause. You don't have this in there. You don't have that in there. Why aren't you using the PACE contract? There's a free wholesale contract that's published to the whole world, and it should be the, the golden standard at this point. It's six pages. Quit complaining. So we, we onboard, and we just tear them apart and put them back together with a, a little to-do list of, Here's the amendments we need to move forward. Um, there's that. There's knowing what's supposed to be there, knowing what's normally in there, doing a gut check. I've started turning down deals that where it doesn't pass our gut check, like either for legality purposes or I think this is too tight of a deal and everybody's going to be like clinging to every last dollar and you're going to resent us for paying us as much as you're going to have to pay for us to do the job. Right. And it ends up being more work anyway for the tight deals. So, I mean, if I can say this to anybody – don't get butt hurt, but do better deals. I'm serious. If you're targeting under $100,000, maybe mm. that's the mindset thing that you need to fix. Right. I worked as a lead manager for a wholesale team, and the leads were easier. You were faster to the point of conversion on these houses that were like under 100 k But dang, the margins, the profits on these things is like 5 to 10 k a piece, and it's tight. And you know what? The the mentality of a seller who's under $150,000, that's my magical number, under $150,000, you're negotiating in hundreds of dollars, right? I can do this maybe 1000 at a time, right? You go up and down by 1000 or 500 but most likely in the, in the 500 range. I can do this. Well, this five. No, this five. That's the mentality you're dealing with. They cling to the pennies. Over $150,000, now you can start dealing and negotiating in fives of thousands of dollars. I can yeah. do 165. 
uh, I want 170. Uh, right. You know, you can deal somewhere in between that that 5,000s at a time. And above 400,000, you're dealing in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of swing room. If you're looking yep. for a cut of a deal, give yourself permission to do bigger deals. It's not that you you have to own a $600,000 house to do a $600,000 purchase price deal. Yeah. And that that's something that's big. Like it, it takes the same amount of effort. I'll contend it actually sometimes takes more effort for the cheaper deals because people are clinging to each dollar. Sometimes it takes more effort to do the same deal for a lower profit. Yep. 100%. So what, like, I, I 100% understand you. My markets are San Francisco and Sacramento. Sacramento That's is easy. like average oh, yeah. 400K. And then Sac- San Francisco, we've got houses in the hood for $700,000. So it gets yeah. pretty crazy with those numbers. And it's, I 100%, like, I can't, I can't, it's really weird. I'm at the point where like, if it's less than 10 K assignment fee, I'm like, yeah. this is barely worth it. Cause it takes the same amount of work yep. for 5 K as it does for 150 K. Right guys, yep. like every single part. So I agree that like the minimum I feel like in deals you should be doing is like $150,000. Um, maybe if you're doing a lot of buy and holds, it can work if you want to just own a yeah. ton of a hundred thousand dollar houses, but for wholesaling, you're talking about wholesaling on this. Yeah, I'm talking right? for wholesale. If you're, if you're going to buy and hold, then again, how, if you're buying stuff that's under a hundred thousand dollars, you're probably also having to throw a bunch more money. in. so your cash on cash return goes to crap real quick, right? Com- you know, compared to the value and, and the appreciation over time, uh, a 5% increase on a hundred thousand dollars is $5,000. Great. 5% increase on a $300,000 house, if you can find a way to get into that, is 15000 Right. So why right. not try to get, like, give yourself permission. I think that's something a lot of people need to get through their heads. Like, you have permission to do bigger deals, like price tag deals, not necessarily bigger margin deals, like you, you need to cut yourself out of a certain margin range. But you, I think a lot of people waste a lot of time now, if you're if you're doing super deep discounts in the sub 150 range, fine. But thinking you've got a deal just because somebody says yes and you can get five thousand dollars out of it is a, I, I'm going to say other than knowing that you're going into it for the experience that you can leverage to do bigger, better deals in the future. Other than that mindset, it's a waste of time. I got you. So, who is the right person to get a transaction coordinator? Like, do you recommend? somebody who just started to have a transaction coordinator immediately like who who do you think what what where should somebody be in their business before they get a transaction coordinator and like hire you for um your services like what's your ideal client yeah so the newbies end up being a little more work for us and that's fine right i'm committed to people's success i've got a strong sense of customer advocacy uh we offer a lot of benefit to newer people We've been through the ringer. We've got a couple of black eyes from different deal types, and we can spot problems from quite a distance just looking at your contract. Ooh, this one has, you said somebody's dead? We're dealing with probate? Oh, okay, you're in for a long ride here because of this, this, and this. You might want to restructure it this other way. So, you know, those sorts of insights come big into play for newer people, and there's there's a lot of different situations. So running it by a TC is a great idea anyway. Um, and then there's this mid range where people kind of get the, the no and the flow. And if they're not too busy, look, I, I realized early on, I'm selling two things as a transaction coordinator. One is confidence. If you're a newer person, your TC is going to be able to back everything up, check your paperwork, gut check your deal and say, you know what? I don't think this is that great of a deal. You're probably going to need to structure it this way. I'm not saying every TC now, traditional real estate TCs not in the same ballpark, not even the same region as far as what right. I would expect a TC to be able to do. A, a traditional TC pushes consistent forms and they just make sure things are signed and on deadline and appointments are made. Um, so no offense to those people. In the wholesale world, you can be a traditional TC maybe, but there's a lot more that goes into being able to underwrite, gut check a deal. So there's a lot of value for a newer person. Then when people ramp up to the point where they've got time and they're doing a few deals and they've got the swing of things, I think it's relatively prudent to, to get in the weeds and do your own, a little bit of your own work to figure out if you like it or don't like it, or if you want to hire it in-house or finally outsource it. Because 
that's a decision I think you, the individual wholesaler, need to make. And then there's the next, the third level is like the people who are like whoosh, performing. I don't have time for any of the paperwork. I just got a client that put me on retainer. We're going to build him a refill every month. He's like, I want you to send uh, contracts. And you know, he's learned it's expensive to have a TC like me sling contracts, right? We're not just slinging offers. It's like when he gets a verbal close, he wants that out within six hours. So right. we're going to schedule, we're going to do a, a seller walkthrough. He's like, just bill it against the retainer and we'll refill it at the end of the month. That's how busy he is having meaningful high dollar conversations with sellers. And so there's an appropriate fit usually at the beginning and usually at the top end and somewhere in the middle, it's good to interact and they can, they can save your butt on a deal that you're not really sure about. Anytime you do a new type of deal or something's unfamiliar, I recommend getting a TC who has experience in that specific thing. And right. one last thing, don't let a TC let your be deal be their first one of that type. Hmm. Say that, say that, say that one more time. Say that one more time for the crowd. Do not let a transaction coordinator be uh, run your deal as their first deal of that type. They need and, to have a partner. And why? You don't know crap. You need the hand of somebody who's been through it. I've had the black eyes. I've been the one that's gone through. Now, I, I care a lot more than I think a lot of other people. I have a lot more attention to detail, and I've studied. I, I listened to the entire Bigger Pockets podcast. I can answer any question that they have, right? I watched almost all of the Sub2 Vault, the, the Pace Morby Creative Finance Group. I watched hundreds that's and so hundreds of hours of content crazy. at 2x speed. So I learned, I learned most of that stuff. I, I've watched way more than most people and I absorb stuff. So I'm okay. And I'm, I'm upfront with people. I've not done this before. This is what I expect to see. And so there's no surprises. I'm not tricking anybody into using me and I'm going through and I'm getting black eyes and I'm doing the extra work to make sure the deals get done. But I'm also hosting a virtual office for other TCs. And I think this is, mm. this is another thing that I really enjoy doing because I like having community. I don't like being alone and bored. Uh, I like having problems to solve like we talked about before. So we have transaction coordinators inside the sub two group who are paying to be on a, an all day zoom with me and it's co-opetition. I'm referring deals to them. They're referring deals to me. They're asking questions of me. I'm giving them updated paperwork and suggestions for how to phrase things. They ask me, Hey, this is going on. How do you deal with that? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I did that once. It was this, right? So they have a support structure. Um, and I'm proud to be part of that. But once they get their, their, you know, once they grow their wings, they're off to fly. They're not going to stay with me forever, and that's fine. But I really enjoy teaching and training, and again, it gets me into even more deals. Yep. Like I, I love that. Okay, so first off, I didn't know that. I have, I don't know, I have an in-house TC because I mainly do cash deals anyways, right? Yeah. Because I do cash yeah. deals. It's just super simple. Like most people can figure out wholesaling with assignments. Talk a little bit right. about like your, what you just were talking about, a community of TCs. So you train other TCs in creative financing transaction. I, I really, yeah. I really want to know that for me. And then also anybody who's watching this, we got eight people right now. If any of you guys are trying to be a TC, learn from the man. Guys, there is, what do you think, Caleb? There's like a thousand hours in the sub two Zoom vault. This man has listened to a thousand hours of creative financing knowledge plus 360 hours of the bigger podcast bigger pockets podcast this man knows so much that is absolutely insane to me like that is insane so wait a minute talk about talk about this part the community because i'm i'm interested for me i might i might sign my tc up for it um uh, tell us tell us a little about it so i would encourage just as as a preface Anytime you have the opportunity to host, especially host, if you're an action taker, host it, uh, or join a virtual office of other people in the same position, right? There's enough fish in the sea for us all to eat. So the scarcity mindset's got to go. And it's a peer group of people who are doing the same stuff as you. And I joined somebody's virtual office for wholesalers and they would live stream their calls into the group. Everybody, you know, there's but there's etiquette in there where everybody shuts up and the one person puts it on speakerphone and just talks to their seller, streams the call, gets feedback afterward. Hey, this was great. I never thought of that. I would have said this. Uh, you know, that sort of feedback was fantastic. And I was like, 
that's great. I ended up not being a wholesaler. So that was, but I had that context and I wanted to do that for transaction coordination because we host a Saturday Zoom and I teach for two hours every Saturday for a sub two students. And that's not enough for the people who are down in the weeds, dealing with stuff, waiting till Saturday is not okay. That's not really taking care of the community. So instead of making people book paid consults with me, I decided I want to start a TC cooperative mm, virtual office, right? So I paid for upgraded Zoom. I got it to where now I can do 1080p recordings. I have my TC virtual office subscribers. It is a paid thing because I do spend a lot of time answering other people's questions, right? How much would, would you pay for a business tool that enables you? I had somebody come in, no experience TCing. I said, look, we're here to support you. Me, my team, who's on staff and paid, and the others who have joined the platform are all supporting one another. And so this person brought in a couple of deals, joined the platform. We helped them do it from zero. And it was absolutely incredible. And I'm super proud that our group was able to enable someone to start a business from scratch and start successfully running deals. I love it. So like what's in the community real quick? Cause I, I want, I'm my, I'm signing my TC up. She doesn't know it yet, but she's, she's signing up now, but I mean, it's, it's literally from 8 AM central to five or 6 PM central, uh, an open zoom and we use breakout rooms. And so I have a virtual assistant, Malou. She's wonderful. And she gets on first thing. I make her host and she will create breakout rooms and, um, my competitors and subscribers, they're both, they're one and the same. We have Caleb's office, uh, Michael's office, Josh's office as breakout rooms. We also have conference room one, two, and three. And so all day we've got the lobby and we've got conference rooms. And when I'm going to go stream a call, like a seller walkthrough, I will live stream uh, a two-way call. Most of the time also recording it into, I'll, I'll announce, I'll be in conference room one doing a seller walkthrough on a sub two seller finance hybrid. And so then we get in there and it's 30 minutes to an hour of me walking a seller all the way through the contract, doing Q&A, overcoming objections, making amendments to contract and getting, hopefully getting it signed. Can't guarantee that. Um, but that's, that's how we're dealing with stuff. I love it. Okay. So my TC is signing up for that. We're going to talk about that afterwards. How does, how does somebody sign up for that? Like, is there a website? Uh, is there, is it still it the is same website? Yeah, I've got a, I've got one under services. I think is TC platform is the or TC virtual office, one of those two on the website, creativetc.io. That is okay. limited to sub two members, right? Because we're covering a lot of sub two specifically NDA covered content. And so it's easier for me gotcha. to just stick just to sub two members. Okay. So it's for just for sub two members right now. Um, it's uh, okay. Gotcha. How about, uh, so I, how about a TC that works for a sub two member? How do you feel about that? Yeah. If that's if something we'd they, have to talk about. If they have permission to access the, the non-disclosure agreement covered resources, then we're good. Okay, solid. Anywho, I just, sorry guys, I, I'm going off on that tangent because I want my TC in there. So I'm gonna figure that out. Um, well, and, I, and I've got someone. hundreds. So here's the, here's the thing. If you wanna be a leader, you don't have to be the best in the field either. You can start a virtual office and get other people to do it. Now it does take a leader to step forward and like stream calls and, and try to get people in there uh, doing the stuff, but the feedback and the little micro community that you build where people can join anytime, come and go, that's a great thing. So whether, whether you're in transaction coordination or wholesaling, I highly recommend getting a virtual office running, use the breakout rooms for private meetings. I mean, TCs are allowed. I said, look, you can give out the, the meeting link to your appointments. And when they pop into the lobby, we'll say, hi, who are you here to meet? And then we'll pop them into your office. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, let's get back on track though. Let's get back to Caleb. Like uh, I, I'm, I'm just good. We're gonna talk about that after. So, um, your journey. You had the house in 2019, yeah. and then you. What? How did you decide to become an actual investor? Oh, rich dad, poor dad. As soon rich as dad, I listened dad, to right? that, I was like, "Yep, not selling that. I'm an investor now. How much yeah. money do I have to save to get my next one?" Mm -hmm. And then I listened to Bigger Pockets, and I read a couple more books. And, and, um, I found Pace Morby, realized creative finance because I'm a creative person, problem solver already. So I really latched onto the whole concept, watched all of Pace Morby's YouTube channel at two X speed because YouTube doesn't have a three X 
uh, you, you might catch a pattern here. Yeah. I can, like I told you, I, I consume something and move on. And so I'll, I'll consume all of something. And I'm like, well, there's nothing more to learn here. I got to do the next thing. I either have to give up and be done with this topic or go to the next level. And so my job at the time was about to collapse. I was about to lose my job. So I'm like, I was already in the process of buying a flip because I learned everything I can learn from bigger pockets and it's time to actually take action. Right. I sucked up three or 400 hours of, of bigger pockets content. It's like there, I'm not learning anything anymore. So now it's time to go do it's the college of hard knocks. Even if I lose a little bit of money on a flip, then it's how much would I pay for a college course? And I'm definitely not making money on a college course. So how about we flip a house, take our lessons learned and, and pivot to the next thing. So I did that and I had saved up for a while while I was listening to the bigger pockets, got my flip going. And then I was, my job was going to go away. So I was like, the creative finance stuff is where it's at. Cause I need less money to get the same amount of stuff done. I'm like, that's the only way it, it it's going to work for me. That's the only way it's going to work for me. Cause I'm not right. in the money, so to speak, to, to really do much else. I, I don't have anything to leverage. I bought a house with 5% down. I got four kids now. I had three at the time. Uh, so yeah, I, I called sub two. Uh, I, whatever, I went through the application process and the salesman, I'm like, I basically told the salesman he was in my way. I'm like, I, I know you need to approve people. It's a, it's a specific community, but he told me I was basically approved and was asking me questions, all sorts of other stuff. And I'm like, bro, my job's about to go away at like the shut up and take my money sort of thing. I need a fast forward. I, he's asking me why I want to do this. And I'm like, I need a fast forward and I absolutely consume content. So as soon as I get in there, I'm Mr. Hoover sucking everything up, learn everything I can. And then I'm gonna go put it to practice. I, need I love that it for my, I love it for my so family much. and st stability. Yep. Okay. So I want to, I want to get into family a little bit because four kids is a lot of kids. How is it? How do you balance being a father and real estate? So go into I'm that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm some dude in Kansas in a basement. I mean, I right. have a basement window over here, so it's nice. But ultimately, and I tell people that on the phone, like, you know, that's my, my non-intimidating intro. And who are you? Oh, I'm just some dude in Kansas living, working out of his basement. I'm a paperwork <laughs> nerd, right? It's really disarming. I'm just a paperwork nerd, some dude in Kansas. Uh, but then, you know, my kids come and go. We got a cat recently, a stray cat at my parents' mm. house that was going to, it's an indoor cat. My mom's like, nah. I'll take care of it, but I can't keep it. They put a sign out. Nobody took it. So I just got a cat. Now the kids come in my office a lot more, which is cool. But, you know, I'm on that Zoom all day, every day. And most of the time I'm in the middle of a conversation. So I don't have a lot of conversations with my kids and wife during the day, even though I work from home, which I think is a little bit unfortunate. A little bit. Right. A little more than a little bit. But I feel so compelled to build the business to where it runs without me. And I've been so trapped working in the business and not on the business that they're like, that's my fear is that I can't let go and let people do the work. But if I don't, then I'm not going to build systems and checklists and processes that allow them to do the work better than they do solo. So there's that fine balance between how many people do you hire versus how much revenue you have coming in. And how do I pu extract myself from the daily grind and just quarterback stuff rather than work the deals while I also work on building processes and things like that? And I'm a process oriented person, but I'm I'm really creative so I can build processes. I just don't like following processes, honestly. Interesting. So, but back to the father thing, like lately I've been working from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pretty solid maybe take a lunch break. Lunch usually shows up because my wife loves me and brings me something. Mm -hmm. uh, I walk upstairs and chat with the kids and I make sure to hold the kids and chat with them a couple of minutes every day during the day. But then I get off at 6 PM. We have dinner and socialize a little bit for a couple hours and then the kids go to bed. And then my wife and I socialize for a little bit and then she falls asleep around 10 and I go back to work until one or 2 AM. Damn. That's you go weird. back to work until one or 2 AM. That's Holy, me right now. but Jesus, wait a minute. What are you doing? Sometimes from... I watch a TV show or something, but how do you wait? What are you doing from 10 to two? Cause nobody is awake. 
I'm just curious. Fixing people's problems. I, I, I compulsively overcommit. That's so crazy. For me to fulfill my promises, I have to work those extra hours. You're an insane. Did, has anyone told you you're an insane person? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I wanted, I wanted, that, I want you to know you're insane, but I love it. I mean, it's crazy cool. Like I, I have trouble. My thing is I have trouble paying attention. Like I, I don't have ADHD, but like I, I'm like right before that probably. Like it's really hard for me to sit down and like consume a Zoom. I'm kind of like, screw this. I'm just gonna, I, I'm gonna go create a problem and then and then I'll watch the Zoom or then I'll try to text Pace, although Pace is super busy. But like, luckily we have so many leaders who know the answers now. I just text them. But man, I'm really slow you, that responding is wild. to texts. But I, I also have a reputation at this point for solving really strange problems. So mm -hmm. I tend to also receive the strangest problems, which I underestimate how much time they're going to take to solve. And I got gotcha. you. I, got I have you. a hard time saying no when somebody, so I don't, I generally don't answer my phone throughout the day because the little one-off questions turn into 15 to 20 minutes when I'm trying to get something done for a paid client. And I love helping people, but if I answer the phone, it's a disservice to the other 12 people on my zoom that are waiting for an answer for something else. Yeah, no, I got it, man. Like I'm, I just want you to know, I'm incredibly impressed with your work ethic. Like that's, I don't know anyone who freaking works that hard. I don't think, I don't even know if pay, like, I mean, Pace gets four hours of sleep. He does work that hard, but like, that's, that's probably the only person who I've heard, like even works comparably to you. So that's he's, so incredible. He's man. more intentional with his time with his family though. I already know that. Yeah. But like, you know, we're, you're getting there. It's man. always like, around the corner for me too. Like I always feel like, you know, but I hit the six month mark. We hit, by the way, exciting news. We hit a hundred thousand dollars revenue on the six month to the day, the six month mark of the company. And I thought that was incredible. everybody so, in the chat. Wait, hold on. Everybody in the chat real quick. <laughs> uh, give, give Caleb a round of applause, like bells and stuff, like whatever you can put in the chat because a hundred K that's like a huge accomplishment. I remember, I remember that moment for me. And it's like, it's incredible. Like it is like such a good moment. Like if I had a bell, I would 100% be ringing it right now. Like I'm very tempted to buy a bell because of Brent Daniels. Like I, I think it's like a great thing to have. <laughs> yeah. I think it's amazing. Like That's to be funny. honest, I think it's like a, such a good way to congratulate people, right? Yeah. Um. So people are giving you love. I don't know if you can see the yeah the chats, yeah, but I'm putting them out there. Yeah. That's amazing, dude. So, what's the next goal? What's your what's like what's the replace me? Replace you. Replace so, like, me in my own business. Gotcha. As soon as so, possible. Okay. But <laughs> realize something because I've been trying, I'm on the same grind, right? Like I'm on the same yeah. grind of replacing myself. You like, this is just from one, one uh, CEO to another. You will never be as good as any employee you ever hire because they just won't ever care as much. Right? Like it's just impossible for that to for that to happen because like we're it's it like they just won't care as much as you not saying you can't do it just recognize I mean, if they did they would have done this already if anybody exactly. else cared as much as me as me about this thing then and it's it's not a point of pride it's like I, i'm trying to serve the community anyway right the community is is first for me in what i do i pr i give away untold amounts of time, energy, value, resources that I've produced. I put my thought, my heart, everything into what I'm doing. And I give most of it away because that's what's best for the most, the most good for the most people. I so, love it. I, I, you know, I think Layla Hormozzi said, you're never going to find an employee that's as good as you. So quit trying, find two people who are 70% as good as you and hire them both hmm. and let that be the difference. Let that make up for it and call it good. I, I love it so much. So, okay, hire yourself out as much as you can. What's the, just because I, I love sharing this with people, like what's the, what's the plan? Like how do you have an idea of like how that's going to happen yet? It's hard to tell, but like, I'm curious, like, do you know, it's like, okay, I got to hire this person. Then I got to hire this person. Like I'm where? Not that clear. No, I've, gotcha. I've got two people that I'm grooming as potential. And what I say is quarterback. I need somebody who understand i need somebody who's the fireman 
right. who puts out the fires, who understands creative finance to the point where they can underwrite, they can make corrections and suggestions based on watching me operate. And we've got dozens of hours of recorded calls and weird situations in our TC Zoom vault because I've got a private Zoom vault that's just for my TC platform people. And, I, you know, I, I know who's really spending time watching that stuff because it shows pretty quickly. And I got two people that I'm looking at as potential replacements for me, like uh, somebody I can turn everybody to while I work on building systems. And I want to go speak to conferences. I want to teach about creative finance to people and turn more people toward creative finance and start doing mm -hmm. JVs and be a creative closer. Oh, speaking of that, one of my highlights was I went to the sub two mastermind in June and an old wholesaler contact calls me, says, Hey, I got this urgent one. Lady's about to lose the home to foreclosure. And I'm like, bro, I'm at a mastermind group. I don't, I have like no, I'm spending time at Pace Morby's house. I'm not interested in doing another call or deal right now. Like another next week would be perfect. And he's like, doesn't have the time. Please, please, please. And I'm like, ah, fine, but give me one call with her. Uh, I set a follow-up call for the next morning after I had the first one because I understood I had to do some some numbers overnight. Called the lady in the morning at Pace's house and had a doc sign ready to go. I sent it over, talked her through the numbers, and walked her all the way through. I did a live seller walkthrough call of a sub-two contract with seller finance combo while I was cleaning Pace Morby's pool, just walking and talking <laughs> on my phone. And that was one of the highlights. I mean, I had several highlights of that mastermind, but it was like, and somebody got a video of me just walking next to Pace's pool, like cleaning stuff out of the out of the pool with his pool net. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I love that. Deal. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. So my man, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I want you to tell... Tell the people what you need right now, guys. Caleb, it sounds like you want some deals. Am I right or am I wrong? You also want to do some deals or no? I do. Also what do you want? want? Do you tell, deals. tell, tell the people what you want real quick. Like what can, what can the audience give you right now where you're going to be like, damn Jonah, bring me back on again. Ooh. Yeah. I want to plug into a few multifamily deals uh, for an equity stake. I got, one guy that's working with me where we want to plug in and start doing, you know, we'll get the estoppels taken care of. We want to do the analysis, re underwrite everything. We want to touch and feel more multifamily stuff, but we also want to start building equity. Like I want to personally engage in some of the higher level deals. Like if it's going to be, if you're going to get my dedicated time and attention, ah, that sounds, that sounds haughty. I don't mean it that way, but it's like, I want to bring the most value by connecting directly into some of these high value deals where I can actually take equity in the deal. Okay. Looking for equity in the deal. Obviously you're looking for people to sign up. It's creative where well, I already had it. Creative TC.io. Creative TC.io. Yeah, so, yeah. And we're, we're, um, we're bringing creative solutions to primarily sub two students, but we we've got some other stuff going where, you know, I, we don't have any problem booking paid consults with people to give direction, but it's not we just for sub two students, right? Like if somebody's not in sub two, they can like, they can hire you, right. For TC stuff. If we're going to do the creative, the non-disclosure agreement covered paperwork in it for a sub two transaction, then a sub two member has to be involved. So I'll, I'll happily JV into a deal and because then I can bring, here's the rule inside of sub two, we actually sign a non-disclosure agreement for the contracts. They're protected. The only way that contract gets out is through a JV. And so if you want to JV with me, hit me up, we'll JV and I, cause I'm allowed to use sub two paperwork on sub two members deals. And if I'm the sub two member that joins the deal, then we want all sub two members protected with the best paperwork that's out there. And that's the ticket. I would talk to base about that. That's severe. Like, I feel like that's limiting your business, man. Like you can't, if you should be able to be a business that's outside you know how many of people sub are inside two. of sub two. There are a lot, but like, dude, you just, the world right deserves now. Caleb Christopher. I the world guys guys we'll if you think there. the world deserves Caleb Christopher like type something type like Caleb deserves the world right now cuz i think i i get it there is the nda but like i'm just saying you that i i would talk to base about that man like well, even listen, like, that's, it. that's, that's just my it, personal though. opinion get me an equity stake in a deal and that's the ticket 
I, all right. I get it. Fair enough, guys. That's fair too. Um, yes. So, okay. So I guess you have to be a sub two student or you have to give Caleb some sort of equity. Like he's still, he's amazing guys. I would a hundred percent use him. Um, like I, people have been giving you love throughout this entire thing, man. Like you're creating an impact in the community into the real estate, real estate investing world. Like I think, I think you've got some amazing things going on guys. You, and, and I think you I have a YouTube a channel. More. Yeah, I do. I was going to, that's right where I was going. Uh, my YouTube channel is, uh, all right, Ricky, uh, <laughs> on my YouTube channel, I'm looking to give a lot of value away there too. And the, anything that's not non-disclosure agreement material, right? There's a lot of myths and mis misunderstandings that are out there and good questions that I would love to answer in, you know, 30, 30 second to one minute clips, or I've got call recordings of like interesting stuff that we've had to deal with. Um, and there's a lot of little, little nuggets here and there. And I've got, I've actually got somebody, this is fun. I got somebody who wants to edit my videos because he, he now gets access to all my recordings. Oh, and that's the value he gets because he gets to see the raw conversations. He signed a non-disclosure with me, but then he's in exchange. He's cutting some up for YouTube to publish. I love it. So wait, how do how do the people find you? Like what? Do they just look up Caleb Christopher on YouTube yeah, or what? I, I think there's a basketball player, but that's the only other Caleb Christopher that shows up on YouTube. So yeah. But how do they find, find you? Caleb just look Christopher up your name? On YouTube. Just search Caleb Christopher on YouTube. I'll okay, be one gotcha. of the first two results. I, I promise. Guys. 100% like, comment, and subscribe to Caleb Christopher's videos. You like you blow this man up. Like he is, he is doing amazing stuff for the world. There are dad jokes in there, guys. Like, hold on, tell us a dad joke, real quick. You got to no, go, on, on the spot, bro. On the spot. What do you call a guy with no arms and no legs uh, in a, a pothole? I don't know what. Bill. Bill? Bill. P-H. Phil. Oh. Real dumb. Oh, got it. Got it. I got it. That's <laughs> that's that's really dumb. That was a really stupid joke, but I like well, it. That's what it means to be a dad joke, so it's dad good. Jokes. I got it. Yeah. I got it. No, I loved it. That was good. That was perfect. <laughs> um, okay, guys. Uh, let's see if we can... Let's see if we can find a link to your... Uh, the people want a specific link to your uh, can you chat uh, in there? I'll, I'll type it out i'm gonna YouTube. find dot com slash c slash caleb dude you got a lot of subscribe you got tons of subscribers bro you got like 1.37 oh. yeah so guess what the same day that i got a hundred thousand dollars revenue at my six month mark i had like 800 subscribers and i was like what if i could get a thousand subscribers today I and my that. instagram had 900 and some odd and I was like, what if I could get a, a thousand subscribers today? So I got a hundred thousand dollars in revenue and we made a push and got YouTube at a thousand and we made a push and got Instagram at a thousand all in one single same day at my six month mark for the business. It was incredible. Let's go, dude. I love that. Um, that was, that was all on me. That was all. I just realized that was just my face the entire time looking up, but that's incredible guys. I put the link in here just in case like Caleb Christopher himself, the real one, not the basketball players. Um, I don't play basketball. My man, I end, usually end the interview with this question. If you could go back to when you started in real estate investing and you could talk to that Caleb Christopher, what would you say to him now? I would say go back even further and start buying houses. <laughs> <laughs> Take a time machine and go yeah. backwards in time, guys. That's, that's what you need to do to keep buying so, houses. Yeah, if I could go back and teach myself anything like from the point I became an accidental landlord, I would, I would tell myself, this was the right mistake. This is a blessing. It's not, not that it's not scary. It's, it's, but double down homeboy, double down. That's I what love I would it. say. We got two subscribers right now. Okay. Perfect. I love it, my man. Um, Okay, so what are you, any last words? Any last things you want to promote? Anything that like comes to mind? You're awesome. I, I appreciate <laughs> what you do for people, um, and it takes a lot. I don't know how much you guys know about this, but like it takes a lot to run a video cast, a podcast, anything. Consi I lack the consistency. 
people are like, why don't you do a podcast? Go watch, go look at the dates of the uploads on my YouTube. Look at how inconsistent I am. Yeah, I, I cannot do a podcast. So I don't I'm know, man. You got 1.13k subs- 1.37k subscribers. That's pretty freaking solid, bro. Yeah, but I'm not a You're doing not something that right. shows up weekly. <laughs> the the best I do is when I have a, a whole pile of videos and I schedule them for 6 weeks in advance, just break them out so it looks like I'm consistent, but I'm inconsistent. So uh, I I think you guys you keep need to saying that, but Jonah it's not for, true. For uh, you got the schedule. It takes, a, I know it takes a lot of time and effort. So I, it does, respect. but I appreciate you too, man. Like it's, I love what you're doing for the community. So I appreciate it. Um, all right, oh, guys here. One okay, thing go. I want to speak to larger groups about creative mm. finance. I want to do Q and a for people who need to learn about it. So I've started doing this for realtors. I, I got a page on my website under the resources tab, creative finance for realtors. And well, I want to turn that into a repeat thing where I get invited to speak to entire brokerages so that we can plug creative finance into brokerages and we can pivot that into other, um, that's the uh, one, right? Yeah, that's the one that link right there. Right. And, Love uh, it. we, we need realtors to be on our side because when you encounter a realtor and you're trying to bring creative finance, it's adversarial. They instinctively reject you because if you're right, it doesn't make them look like a smart person. Right. The only way to win with realtors on creative finance is to connect uh, only to connect first and have them introduce you. Then they get credit for knowing somebody who knows creative finance. Otherwise you're an enemy. No nope. promise. Totally makes sense, man. I get it, dude. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm H and outreach. So I deal with that nonsense all the time. Yep. Um, so, okay guys for Caleb, Christopher, subscribe to his channel. He's an amazing man. I love it. For the rest of this, guys, please like, comment, and subscribe this video to to the channel. Like you guys are gonna see way cool content soon. Wait two weeks. All of my everything on this YouTube so far is just the podcast, but I am soon going to be doing dropping gems in some videos. So I'm I'm gonna I'm going after Caleb's subscriber count. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get there because I know podcasts are good, but I need to start dropping the knowledge, which is gonna be we're gonna freaking get there soon. So please like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Guys, the next one is gonna be Monday because obviously I'm not gonna do a podcast on Thanksgiving. Nobody's gonna come on on Thanksgiving, right? So I'm gonna uh I'm doing it Monday at 5 p.m. PST with Ryan Corcoran, I think is how you say his last name. He's the multifamily guy. He he did a whole multifamily series in uh, in sub uh, in sub two. So that's gonna be cool. We're gonna learn a lot about his story, multifamily. It's gonna be amazing, guys. I appreciate all of you guys for coming on so much. You guys make this show amazing. This is episode 50, Caleb Christopher. Killed once again. What an honor. <laughs> Let's what an honor. Go.